Portugal 2 and Czechia 1. Dramatic game at the Euro 2024 Group F game. This was the last game of the first round. Now everyone has already played their games. Shout out also to everyone who was on TikTok. We were live on TikTok and YouTube and Twitch. And one person in particular, Brian Yamwe. I need to give a shout out to Brian Yamwe. Brian Yamwe has said this at the beginning. Portugal lack balance that midfield. Portugal started with uh, Bernardo Silva, Bruno, and Vitinha in midfield. Very good midfielders, but you don't really have anyone protecting. I get the logic of not having a, someone protecting, especially if you have a back three of Pepe, Ruben Diaz, and Dalo. Because once you introduce... Um, a holding midfielder, it's like, now you're not dynamic going forward, right? It's a bit too defensive. But then you had Cancelo on the wing and Nomendes on the other wing playing as wingbacks and Ronaldo and Rafael Leo up front. I just believe, like, I don't know what it is with Martinez. Like, this, the way this team was selected, the way they were playing, it's like, they really didn't believe in how they were playing. Then this particular formation doesn't suit any of these people. I don't think anyone there actually plays with a back three. Leo, when he plays at AC Milan, is playing with a front three and he's on the far left. Ronaldo lives playing up front alone with people supporting him, at least two. Joao Cancelo is, in as much as he's uh, playing in midfield, he's not attacking, he's playing from wide, right? Then Bernardo Silva and Bruno, uh, yes, they will, uh, they will support the attack, but they won't run past the strikers to create that, um, to have someone like running as a box-to-box. -box. Bruno is very good at what he does, but that is the one thing that is, like this, this game, I feel like it just lacks two major things, like, those runs that go into the box um, and just that like balance in midfield, as Bran Nyamwea said on TikTok. One thing I realized is that whenever the ball went to the wing, they were taking so long. Like there were so many step overs. There was, there was a lot of stuff happening. And the one time or the first time or the first one of the first few times, they decided to swing the ball in early. If they were already one nil down, right? Um, I forget what that guy's name is. Provod, Provod with, the, with a great goal that gave them a 1 0 lead against the run of play. Scored with like, I think, 20, about 20, 18, 20 minutes to go. And already they started causing havoc, right? They started, no, 62 minutes actually, with 28 minutes to go. And yeah, Portugal had to step up at this point. They're like, okay, we need to stop joking around. Like, what are we doing? And the, the one time they swing the ball, the ball early, go straight to Nuno Mendes at the back post, he headers it down. Ronaldo is lacking somewhere there, but it's a Rav Ranak on goal, right? The, like, that early ball is key because Ronaldo is waiting for that ball to come in. And it was actually so hilarious to see how, how much they were trying to force that ball into Ronaldo in like the first few minutes. Then at some point, they were like, okay, so let's not force it. Let's try and play it. They get to the wing. They want to play it about, they want to play it around. Like, they want to just do the whole passing thing. Like, I get it. You you have to play with some flair. But at the same time, you're not playing to your strengths. Because once Ronaldo, Ronaldo is really good as when you play that ball early and he's playing against a defense that's on its back foot. But once you come and go to the wing and then you're cutting back, the defense has settled. Then Ronaldo has to keep up and play against like three players, right? Because there's no midfielder running from, from midfield into the D. Rafael Leao wants to stay in the back post if it's coming from the right. If it's coming from the left, he's somewhere in midfield. The wing backs, yes, and as much as they're playing wing back, they're not pushing that much. It's like Nuno Mendes gets to the edge of the D and that's where he stops. Playing as a wing back in a in a three, five something formation, you have to go all the way. But I guess those were instructions from the coach that let's let's not let's not stay let, let's not open ourselves too much so they were just not playing to their strengths i believe one of the main strengths is ronaldo ali ball like give it to him ali then another strength is bruno but bruno you're putting him in a place where there's so much in midfield it's so congested right so you need to clear that midfield by letting one of those midfielders run straight into the d and then the other person i'm thinking of is uh, Barado Silva, who just goes anywhere. He sort of just lacks anywhere and everywhere. And I feel like in the second half, when they started playing through him a bit more, like it made more sense, right? Because instead of him uh, attacking straight from the wing, he attacks in that right half space, which he's very good at. So like he'd go and maybe he'd turn and then he cuts, cuts it back. Because I think that's how the goal came, the second the equalizer came in. He was attacking that left half space, then cut back nicely. He gave the ball, passed the ball to a midfielder who just whipped it early. So play through Bernardo Silva a bit more. This this team is too stuck. This team is too stuck to be playing like this. This is not... I don't even understand why you'd play with a back three, to be honest. In my opinion, I don't think this... This team, everyone... Everyone, like... 
You play like a 4-3-3. It suits everyone, in my opinion. Because you have Bruno, who can then play as part of a three in midfield. You have Barrow Silva, who can either be part of the three up front, and he becomes like a false uh, three who's dropping. And uh, Dalo, because now you have to pick either Dalo or Cancelo. You can't pick both. And that person goes to the wing and just bombs forward. You Then you pick one of the defensive midfielders. They have such good defensive midfielders. You have Danilo. You have... Um, Ruben Neves, you can play through, and you also have Joao Neves, right? And you have Joao Palinha. Palinha is a destroyer. You just put him there in midfield, let the guys go do their thing. He can defend. Like, I feel there's so many ways. A back three with this squad is not the way to go. For me, for me. I guess also maybe he hasn't had enough uh, coaching time to actually coach them through what he would like, if that's a back four, because it's a bit more technical than a back three. You do a back three, even if, you, when, if I join a team today, and I'm told we're going for a tournament, and I have not had time to coach them back three immediately because it's it's not so hard to get like a back four because back four has a lot of intricacies, a lot of overlapping, underlapping. When this person goes, I need to stay, especially in the three in midfield. You see, in a three five two, there's some solidity that you assure yourself. Like regardless, if we lose the ball, the midfield is full. We're not susceptible to defensive uh, transitions. So I don't know. I just think that there's so much more he can do with this squad. Anyway, what he did well, he brought on the subs. Uh, Pedro Neto and um, Francisco Concesao completely, completely changed the game. They're the two people who combined to create the goal, and it was such a nice goal, right? Like, in the sense of the players that you've brought on being in the place you want them to be. Granted, the defender made a mistake. It's like, Alcatraz Chobo Wa. Like, Chobo Wa is a game we play in Kenya where you close your legs so that the ball doesn't go through. And then the ball goes through by force, and then Concesao is that finish. And he celebrates, moves his, his, his jersey, gets a yellow card. But that squad is like, this squad is too good to be playing such damn football, to be honest. It's the most stacked team in this whole entire tournament. Like, it should be playing like this. But Concesao is someone who are shouting out so much in the, um, in the prediction. I had watched him play a few times, especially during the qualifiers, and a bit more for, I think he plays for Porto. And yeah, man, the boy is just so good, man. Like he's he's actually just insane. He played against us in the Champions League. Like he's I'm 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 a big fan. I'm a big fan of Concesao. So yeah, uh, one more thing I wanted to add is that the the um, there was a disallowed goal where Ronaldo headed and then it came off the post and then I can't remember who finished and then it was they said it was offside. The automatic, the automated offside, uh, aut automated offsides are working quite well. To be honest, this entire tournament, the biggest thing that I love about them is it takes no time. Like within seconds, we have a decision. We're not drawing lines. We're not being steward at well in the in the VR room, like drawing lines and having to measure them. And we're watching them on screen. We're, it becomes a geometry class. Like that's what we're that's what why we're here. So. Automated offside, working well. Like, I'm a fan. It's going to be in the Premier League next season. I think it's something that's needed. That time that VR actually takes to go through all these decisions needs to come down drastically. So, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of automated offside. Other than that, yeah, man, Portugal. This one, you got away with it. You take it. The thing about tournament football is you don't have to pick now. Just to win your games, right? Don't be in that pressure of, oh, we need um, Germany to lose and Scotland to do this so that we can make it to the round of 16. No. Just win your games. Start picking by the third game or the round of 16 game. That's when you start picking. At this moment, just take your wins. Go home. Sleep on it. Focus on the next game. Game plan and how you can get better and how you can start developing those good habits that are going to help you later in the tournament. So, yeah. Germany, sorry, Portugal, 2-1 winners over Czechia, and they go to the, they go to the, no, they're in second place, because Turkey are in first place, so you see how that late goal that Turkey scored, when the goal, when the Georgia goalkeeper went up, how crucial it is in such scenarios, yeah, goal difference, it makes a big, big difference, so, yeah. Turkey up top, Portugal in second place, Czechia in third, and Georgia in last place. And that is Group F. And we're done with round one. Tomorrow, we move on to the second round of games. We'll be doing a live for the Germany versus... Who is Germany playing? Hungary game at 7 p.m. local time. Peace!
Peace.